Welcome back to the show, folks. This is The Wrap Up, your daily dose of pop culture and movie news hosted by me, Mr. H Reviews. On today's show, we've got some interesting snippets of information about Ghostbusters, the third one sequel to Ghostbusters 2, potentially a soft reboot. Uh, but we've got some interesting statement from Jason Reitman about that film, obviously the son of Ivan Reitman, so we'll get to that. We also have some news, some slight spoilers ahead for Joker, as well as A Quiet Place 2. And then, then we will wrap it up with a rumour about two additional villains joining Matt Reeves' The Batman film. Of course, yesterday's show will know that we had the four villains revealed, but now there's been an additional two which are rumoured. So, guys, if you want to skip right ahead to anything that I have said, please do just skip right ahead to the timestamps, which are linked down below in the description box, as well as in a pinned comment. Also, just straight from the top, if you're new here, hit subscribe. You can stay up to date on this, the daily dose of pop culture and movie news, all in one place, the wrap-up. So let's get right into it. Ghostbusters. Now, this is from a fan panel. So, in terms of the original source, it was it was just from a, a Ghostbusters fan panel. Um, of course, people will know that there's, there's been a lot going on in the world of Ghostbusters recently. We had uh, a whole bunch of, well, a funny report about Ghostbusters 2016. Uh, Paul Feig, Feig wanted to do a sequel, all of this kind of nonsense. Now, this movie is said to be shooting in July. We've had some slight confirmation from Sigourney Weaver that the original cast will be back, but that's where it ends. There's no actual clear-cut confirmation. So, Jason Reitman is the son of Ivan Reitman. He's come on board to apparently do something which is a love letter to the original. So he stated... We wanted to make a love letter to the original movie, and this is a story that I, again, I did not expect to be making a new Ghostbusters movie. I thought I was going to be this indie dude who made Sundance movies, and then this character came to me. She was a 12-year-old girl, so this is going into the whole fact that it's a soft reboot. I didn't know who she was or why she popped into my head, but I saw her with a proton pack in her hand, and I wrote this story. This story began to form over many years, actually, and it started with a girl, and all of a sudden it was a family. And eventually, I knew this movie that I needed to make, that I needed to write. Well, look, Jason Reitman, people are thinking it, I'll just say it. The reason why this popped into your head, uh, Proton Pack with a little girl, is because that's the era that we're living in. Uh, um, we're, we're living in the era where the originals don't really you know, mean an awful lot anymore, and unfortunately, we're looking to hand the torch over to a new generation. Dark, uh, Dark Fate is doing it. We're having it with the uh, Avengers movies. Essentially, every single film property that was out there is now being handed over to a new generation. So, this is why this popped into your, into your brain, because this is what Hollywood is doing currently. They are passing the torch. They are doing soft reboots. So... This obviously just confirms that yes, one of the main characters is a 12-year-old girl. That's not an issue with me. It was more the issue that they sold it as a clear-cut sequel to the original films and it would have the original cast involved. Um, that's my main issue with this. I'm still going to watch this with open open eyes, open open thoughts, and, uh, and hopefully it's going to be good. I don't particularly think, just because Jason Reitman is the son of Ivan Reitman, that it gives him a pass, that we just need to go, yes, this film will be good. He's just the son of the original guy. Like, it doesn't mean he's going to be uh, anything special. But I will watch this with open with an you know open mindset. What do you guys think, though? What do you think to his comments? Are they good? Are they bad? Please do let me know down below in the comment section. Now, we'll move ahead to... A Joker and a Quiet Place. Now, this is an in, in an interview with Brian Tyree Henry. Now, there's there's ever so tiny spoilers in this, but not not massively. So, Brian Tyree Henry has earned acclaimed, you know, on the big screen with supporting performances in adult dramas like Widows and If Beale Street Could Talk. It will soon be lending his talents to major Hollywood tentpoles like Joker. And A Quiet Place 2. Both films are being kept under lock and key by their studios. Yep. Although we have had some plot leaks for The Joker recently, which I will leave linked down below in the description box if you want to check out that video. So, in terms of The Joker, so speaking about Joker, the Todd Phillips directed comic book film starring Joaquin Phoenix as Batman's iconic villain. Brian Tyree Henry said... The film really goes into just the origin story, and it doesn't concern itself with Bruce Wayne's Batman. 
Villains are never born that way, they're made. There's something that happens in their lives that they gave up their faith in humanity. They see the flaws of humanity and mankind and feel like they must correct it. And what happens with Joker is you start to see how he really was a happy person. He really was trying to find his hope in humanity until it broke him down and he just had to give up and reshape it. Now this, this to me, goes absolutely hand in hand with the plot leak. So go check out the video that I've linked down below and then link it back to this. I think we're starting to build a picture of those plot leaks being true. So it says, Henry said the defining relationship in the film is between Phoenix's character, Arthur Fleck, and his mother, played by Frances Conroy. And again, that's something which the plot leaks told us. The official Joker trailer showed Arthur caring for his elderly mother and stoked fears that her death in the film might tip Arthur over to the dark side. There's going to be a connection made about a boy and his mother. That is another thing that you're going to see. That he was capable of love at some point, but at the end of the day, I think it's all about how he was made that way, how he didn't start being that kind of person. So again, this goes hand in hand with the plot leaks. It really does. Um, I'm not going to spoil it. Just go check out that video. As for A Quiet Place 2, the sequel to John Krasinski's horror blockbuster, Henry couldn't reveal much uh, other than teasing that the story will find the surviving members of the Abbott family. So that's the, uh, the Emily Blunt's family, John Krasinski's family. Finding out that they're not the only ones. The original actors, Emily Blunt, Millicent Simmons and Noah Jupe are all returning for the sequel. That'll be interesting because this will have to be set in the future then because kids age rapidly. Um, you only have to look at the Stranger Things kids to see that these children are going to look like significantly different um, so this will have to be set in the future um, obviously not directly afterwards uh, details about Henry's character have yet to be revealed the actor did tease though I think that we're also going to get a few answers to the origin of where and how this whole thing happened I think that people want to know that but I think you're just going to see another side of it more of humanity that survived this thing in this next story that's interesting um, I hand it over to you though Joker have you seen the plot leaks? Did you go check out that video? What do you think? Do you think that his comments now indicate that he, you know the plot leaks were true? Uh, and with respect to A Quiet Place 2, this is a movie which I I don't think needs, it doesn't need to be made by any stretch of the imagination. However, what I will say is that this is a film which I am looking forward to simply because I did like the original. I don't think it was spectacular, um, but I liked the fact that it had it had it just a it just had a bit of a you know a bit of a gimmick and i liked that um and i also like the fact that they just murdered that kid straight away spoilers i guess for a movie that was out a few years ago um just because i think that that's good it shows that you know this world had very real stakes from the outset and i like i like that they went there so i'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this down below in the comment section the origin of these creatures and how this thing happened good news bad news do you think that's good uh, let me know down below in the comments. So let's move on now to the Batman. I can't find the original source to this. So take this with a massive pinch of salt. But it says, with a June 25th, 2021 release date and Robert Pattinson signed on to play the new Dark Knight for Matt Reeves as the Batman, it is quickly taking place. So with the titular Cape Crusader found, it appears the filmmaker is starting to put together a rogues gallery of villains for the, hero's bat uh, the, for the hero to battle. Yes, they will learn that Reeves is looking to cast the Riddler, the Penguin, Batwoman and Firefly. And now a new report, no source, so top journalism there. Uh, sheds a light on two more villains Batman will likely cross paths with. So six villains, potentially, now. Now, before I get into revealing who they are, just just to say from the outset, I had a comment on yesterday's video, which I, I genuinely agree with, actually. This is starting to look like it's too full. Too many villains. You're either going to get them in passing, so it kind of shows them as what's the point in having them in the film anyway, or you are going to get a overstuffed film with very little detective work involved. And if that is the case, then we've been missold because we were told that this would go back to the detective roots. But I just wanted to raise that from the outset because I think that's really important to note. With four villains, that was going to happen anyway. It's, it's, that's a lot. But now with potentially six villains, this is an awful lot. So Two-Face is said to be coming in. Okay, now this is a casting call again. 
But Reeves will be looking for a male actor between the ages of 30 to 40, uh, which is about right for, of course, the DA of Gotham. Now, outside of that, there's, there's not really any other uh, snippets from this. However, somehow, some people have garnered that that's Two-Face, which, I mean, I don't really understand that, but never mind. Um, the other one was the Mad Hatter, which is interesting because I think they're using the Mad Hatter in... Um, in Batwoman now, or a, a gender swapped version of it. So, this is 40 to 50. No mention of ethnicity. I, I don't know about this. The rest of them, for those that don't know, was the Riddler, Penguin, Catwoman, and Firefly. Um, not overly sure, but apparently. Like I said, he'll be using the detective skills to solve a murder mystery involving all of the villains. I just think it sounds too... It just sounds like there's too many villains. Too much going on in this film now. Um, but like I say, I hand it on over to you guys. What do you think? What do you think about this? Uh, is this good news? Is this bad news? Please do let me know down below in the comment section. Now, we've got some time for some viewer questions. So what we're going to do, we're going to dip in the mailbag, see what we've got. But if you want your viewer questions answered on this daily show, please do submit them to me at Gmail, mistakereviews at gmail.com. Use the subject line at the wrap up. And then at the end of each show, I will have time to get to them. Yesterday, unfortunately, I didn't because I have a Border Terrier puppy, which needed to be stripped. Um, for those, a bunch of people asked if, if you could see the puppy. You can. He's featured heavily over on my Instagram at Mr. H Reviews. Go and, go and see him if you want. Um, you can follow me there. But let's dip in the mailbag. Let's see what we've got today. So, Gonzalo emailed in. So, thank you so much for your email, dude. He states, Dear Mr. H, love your channel and your critical review of films. After watching Detective Pikachu, do you think, and I really like this question, actually, do you think that Space Jam 2 with LeBron James should have the same style of CGI animation that, that Detective Pikachu had. Now, the reason why I really like this question is because, one, no one's talking about Space Jam 2. But this is, for those that, you know, have been around since Space Jam and, uh, you know, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, these kind of films, this is going to be a massive nostalgia hit. Um, and I just find it fascinating that no one's talking about it. So I really, I, I found this question to be really, really interesting. So he says, obviously, you know, should it have the same style of CGI animation that Detective Pikachu had? This kind of, it's not photorealistic, but it's to that level where you can see the fine hairs. It's kind of like that Monsters Inc. taken up to, you know, another level interaction with, you know, with live action. Um, now he says also, and how should Warner Bros. reintroduce the Looney Tunes to a new generation that aren't familiar with Bugs Bunny, Marvin the Martian? Uh, are the Looney Tunes in general... Uh, or, and the Looney Tunes in general. Thoughts? Okay, so, I love this question. I really, really do. The Looney Tunes, oh my god. Um, how can Warner Bros. introduce them to a new generation? I don't, I don't think they have to. I think they frame this as something for the people who grew up with it and liked the originals. And inevitably, I think if it's fun and it's of that same vein, I think it'll capture the imagination of children as well. I, I don't really think the Looney Tunes are outside of kind of everyone's remit. I don't think you need to revamp them for a new generation. I don't think they need any, um, any revamping, any, you know, bringing it to the modern era. I don't think that needs to be the case at all. I think they stand up as they are. Um, and I also think that's probably where people go wrong, is that they look at these characters that are age-old, they are beloved, and they say, let's revamp them. Let's redo it. I don't think they need to. Um, with respect to the CGI animation, though, difficult. Difficult one to decide, because the Looney Tunes are so iconic because of the animation style that they had. And even in the film, it was... It was sort of kept in Space Jam, but sort of not I think I think with photorealism with that level of realistic CGI anyway sorry for uh, you know the Looney Tunes in, in a Space Jam movie 
I think it might fall way, way, way too much into the uncanny valley. Uh, painfully so, in fact. Uh, Bugs Bunny's, uh, you know, nemesis, the guy with the, the gun, the hunter, can't remember his name. He'd look really, really odd. Uh, I think part of the charm of the Looney Tunes is keeping to some of that aesthetic. So, hopefully this answers your question. I actually don't know what animation they should go with, but I don't think they should go with exactly the same one as Detective Pikachu. I think it works for Detective Pikachu. I don't think it would work for the Looney Tunes just because part of their charm is the aesthetic which everyone knows. So, but I hand it on over to you. One, guys, do you think Warner Bros. needs to revamp them? How do you think they need to introduce them to a new generation? Do you think like I do, that they should just stick to the original fans and then it'll capture the imagination of children now? Or do you think they do need to revamp it and how? And also, do you think it needs to have a, a an amped up level of CG? Let me know down below in the comment section. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this show. Stay tuned because today I've got a Doctor Sleep trailer reaction video. I also have to give away and I've... I've had to wait to do this because I need to figure out how I was going to do it. But I also am running a competition to give away three copies of the art of Godzilla King of the Monsters. It is only open, unfortunately, to the UK, Republic of Ireland, Canada and the USA. However, stay tuned for that video. And again, that's not it's not on me in terms of where it can go. It's in terms of shipping and things like that. Uh, but three copies, sending it all over the world, quite expensive. Uh, it is what it is, but hey, look, three copies. We've got a giveaway video, so stay tuned for that. Like I said, if you want to hit subscribe, please do stay up to date on this, the Daily Dose of Pop Culture and Movie News. Submit your viewer questions for tomorrow's show. As always, thank you so much for watching. I haven't missed age. Take care.